Have you ever opened up a receptacle, a switch, or a light box and found unused mystery wires that aren't connected to anything and you wondered why they're there and where they actually go? Well, today we'll cover four common practices or code requirements that may explain those extra wires, how to confirm them, and how you may be able to use them to your advantage. Hey guys, John here with Backyard Maine. I've been an electrician for over 40 years, and on this channel, we try to help you with all your electrical and DIY needs. So if you find the videos useful, consider subscribing to the channel. Okay, let's get to it. The first common place to find unused wires is in a light switch box. Back in 2011, Article 4042 of the NEC was updated, requiring a neutral wire in light switch boxes. This gave people the option to connect smart switches or other lighting controls that may require a neutral wire to operate correctly. There were five exceptions to the rule, but exception number two was removed in the 2023 code update, so now a neutral wire is required in most applications. I have another video that covers this change in much more detail, and I'll link it right up here for you to watch next. But even before the change in 2011, many of us were already installing neutral wires at every light switch. By doing this, it gave you the ability to extend the circuit onto other switches or even receptacles in the future. This was usually done by simply bringing the feed to the switch box rather than to the light. If the feed did go to the light box first, it was common to drop a two-wire switch loop down to the light switch, leaving the light switch with no neutral. But now, if we feed the light rather than the switch, the change requires us to drop a three-wire down to the switch box. This will give us a red and black wire to connect to our switch, and the white wire will be dropped off in the box and capped for future use. So if you're finding unused white wires in your switch boxes, they are required by code and they can be used in the future if needed. And second, you may also be finding unused red and black wires in your switch boxes and there may be a logical explanation for those as well. When roughing and wiring for a ceiling fan, we'll run a three wire cable and carry two switch legs up to the ceiling fan box. One switch leg for the fan and the other one for the light. And normally they would both be connected. But there are a few reasons why one of the wires may have been left unused. It's possible a change was made and a light fixture was installed instead of the fan. Or the fan was removed and replaced by a light fixture after the initial installation. I've seen this quite a few times. Also, some customers like the light and the fan to be controlled by the same switch. This is especially common with bathroom fans. Another common situation is that the fan was installed without a light kit connected. In many of these situations, you may also have a blanked off switch location, but not always. Sometimes the fan and the light switch will only take up one device space. But in any case, the other end of the extra wire should be found in the light box and could be used if needed. A simple continuity test with a multimeter could prove this out. Before we move on to number three, the most common place to find unused wires, I want to introduce you to AG1, the sponsor of today's video. You know, I'm always working on projects and videos and making sure everything runs smoothly around the house and I realized that taking care of myself needed to be just as easy. That's where AG1 comes in. Every morning, I grab a scoop of AG1, mix it with some cold water, and that's it. I drink it right here before I start my day. It's been part of my morning routine for about seven months, and it feels like a small win for my health every single day. AG1 supports my energy levels, and it keeps me feeling ready to tackle whatever comes my way. Plus, it's packed with prebiotics, probiotics, and daily nutrients that make me feel good about what I'm putting in my body. And it tastes really good as well. It has a subtle pineapple and vanilla flavor, and it's really smooth and easy to drink. If you're ready to make 2025 your year, try it out. Go to drinkag1.com slash backyardmain or scan the QR code on the screen to get $20 off your first subscription. 
Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. The third very common location to find unused wires are in outlet boxes. And there could be a very good reason for finding them there as well. Article 21070 of the NEC requires all habitable rooms have a lighting outlet controlled by a light switch located near the entrance to the room. Usually the lighting outlet is a ceiling light or possibly some wall sconces, but there is another acceptable method that can be used as well. The code allows this requirement to be fulfilled by installing a switched receptacle in the room. The idea is to install one or more outlets in the room that are controlled by a light switch that's located near the entrance to the room. This would allow a lamp to be plugged in to fulfill the requirement for a switched light. It's not a code requirement, but many electricians will turn the switch receptacle upside down, making it easy to identify. If you have a light switch that doesn't seem to control anything, or you have a receptacle that doesn't seem to have power all the time, there's a good chance that you have a switched receptacle in the room, especially if the room doesn't have a ceiling light. So what does this have to do with extra wires? As electricians, we don't always know the best location for the switch receptacle because we don't know how the room will be set up. But it is a common practice to switch one receptacle in the room, but wire the whole room so any receptacle can be changed to the switch receptacle in the future. This is done by simply running a three wire cable around the room between all the receptacles. The black wire will typically be hot all the time and the red wire will be controlled by the switch. So maybe that first outlet is controlled by the red wire, but then you have red spares at all the other receptacles in the room. Typically, the unused switched wires will be connected together at each box. And at the last box in the room, you'll have a single wire capped with a wire nut. These extra wires will allow you to make any outlet in the room switched in the future. So how do we verify that the extra wire is switched and it's on the same circuit as the unswitched wire? We can connect a multimeter between the red suspected switched wire and either the ground or the neutral wire. Then cycle the switch and verify it controls power to the wire. Next, we'll turn off the circuit breaker and verify that power is lost from both the red and the black wires. Once we verify the extra wire is switched, we can use it to control one or multiple receptacles in the room. To do this, we take our unswitched black wires off the receptacle and connect our red wires in their place. Remember to be sure to connect the black wires together with wire nuts so you won't lose power to downstream devices. Also, of course, always be sure the power is turned off and tested with a multimeter to verify the wires are de-energized before working on any electrical circuit. And the fourth common place to find unused wires is in junction boxes, maybe up in the attic, out in the garage, or down in the basement. When I wired my house 25 years ago, I carried a spare 20 amp circuit up to the attic and another one out to the garage because these areas don't have easy access to my electrical panel, which is located in the basement. Now, this isn't a code requirement, but it can save a lot of work if you need a circuit later on that wasn't part of the original plan. I have them labeled in the panel and in the junction boxes to make them easy for me or somebody else to find and use in the future. So you may be finding some spare circuits and junction boxes at your home as well. There are a lot of other possibilities for those unused wires, especially in older homes that have been renovated a few times and it can be difficult to figure out where they all go. If you need help finding those wires, you may wanna watch this video next, where I use a circuit tracer to find hidden wires in walls and the breakers that feed them. I'm John from Backyard, Maine. I'll see you on the next one.